Well, welcome into all of you guys watching online here. I am Kevin John. That is Matt George with ABC 10. You also see Matt George on Locked on Kings. And Matt, pretty much any other game, I'd be excited to talk about the Kings and how they played, but this was a rough game today. Let's just dive straight into it. If I would have told you, Matt, the Jazz would be without Markinen, Clarkson, Sexton, and the Kings were riding a seven-game road winning streak going in there. Any chance in heck you think that they would lose tonight? Yeah, there was uh, the expectation was certainly not that the Sacramento Kings would struggle as much as they did. I think what's most concerning about this game, and I talked about this at length on Locked on Kings tonight, is that it's not just the Kings weren't ready to go for the Utah Jazz early on because the Jazz jumped on them, scored 19 points in, in, a, in a little over four minutes. Defensively, we know the Kings sometimes struggle coming out of the gate. What was most concerning to me is that offensively, the Sacramento Kings did not look like themselves. They didn't look ready to play their own game. They were settling for far too many outside shots, far too many isolation threes. The ball movement wasn't there, and the Kings have been one of the best teams at passing and sharing the basketball. The reason why the Kings have been so good this season, get so many players in double figures, is because the ball moves. Well, tonight it wasn't moving. The Kings just did not look ready to play their own game, resulting in them only scoring three points over an eight and a half, almost an eight and a half minute stretch from the first to second quarters. You go down by 25 points, regardless of your competition. Uh, yeah, that's unacceptable. You know, for a second, I thought the Kings were playing with replacement players out there in the first quarter. You talked about 19 points that the Jazz rattled off. 19 points was all the Kings had at the end of the first quarter, where the Jazz had 40, I believe, or something like that. Uh, so obviously not the start that the Kings were anticipating. We did see them close the gap, tie the, uh, tie the game in the second half. So completely, I guess you could say a tell of two halves. Uh, to say the least. Um, not a lot of positive you can take out of this, but if you can take something positive out of this, De'Aaron Fox and Keegan Murray have both just been brilliant personally, I think, over the last few games. And what Keegan continues to do, not just with the three ball, but just the impact that he's making on the court, is one of the positive things that I can say from looking at this game today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's hard to draw positives from a game like tonight when you know you should have won, especially when it's on the first night of a second night uh, of a back-to-back, -back, and the second night is against one of the best teams in the NBA and the Boston Celtics tomorrow night. But in reality, look, you got six three-pointers each from Keegan Murray and De'Aaron Fox. Now, maybe you expected a little more out of Keegan. That's a little more his game than De'Aaron's. Uh, but Keegan is an excellent sharpshooter. He's proven uh, to to be someone that the Sacramento Kings can lean on. He's one of many players that have stepped up and kind of caught fire for the Kings. He and De'Aaron Fox combined for 33 points in the third quarter. So the two of them very much carried the Sacramento Kings back into this game. You talked about them closing gaps. Like, this Kings team has proven that they can close gaps quickly. Like, when you have one of the best offenses that the world has ever seen, uh, and seriously, NBA history-wise, the Kings have a historically good offense you know that they can close gaps. However, if you're looking forward and projecting towards the playoffs, which is what the Kings should be doing with every game so far as preparing for a playoff run, even if you have the opportunity or the availability and ability to come back from 25 down, you should not want to put yourself in that position in the first place. It shouldn't take yourself falling in a 25-point hole for the team to, to respond, for the team to wake up. And that's what was most impressive to me, I guess, about De'Aaron Fox's 37-point performance tonight is he literally had to carry this team mm -hmm. through most of that first half and even early parts of the third quarter until other guys started stepping up. Harrison Barnes stepped up a little bit. Keegan Murray got going in the third quarter. For a team that's as good as the Sacramento Kings, as deep as the Sacramento Kings, I expect off nights, but that can't happen. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that. I recently heard an interview with DeMontis Sabonis, and he was talking about how they know De'Aaron Fox is that dude come late in the game. And how he said, yes, we know that he can go off. We know that De'Aaron can cook. As we've seen in the fourth quarter, he's leading the whole league in clutch points this year. So to hear his teammates have that much faith in him is great. But at the same token, you guys can't just sit back and say, well, De'Aaron's going to throw on a Superman cape, so we could just play Robin or, you know, uh, second, whatever the heck, and let De'Aaron do, uh, you, you know, let De'Aaron take the lead. Obviously, like you said, Kings, they have pieces. They have great shooters around De'Aaron Fox, and they have other people who can score the basketball. That is not just him. Another thing that I think is interesting as well, while you talked about the Kings having that potent offense, we know they're leading the league in offense this year, and they're averaging the most points, etc. The unfortunate thing is, we lose track of how poor defensively they've been. And we're not talking how they've been dead booty last the last two to three years, but still, they have not been a great defensive team throughout the whole season. So, yes, while it's nice to say, oh, yeah, they can go out there, they can close gaps when they're down by 25 because they have the offensive firepower, 
it's important too to say defensively, if you were better, then you wouldn't have to close gaps like that and rely on tough offense, you know, especially going down uh, to the wire of the game. Well, I think I think it's exaggerated a lot of the time how bad the Kings defense is, because if you look at the majority of teams in the playoff picture defensively, they're not good. Like the modern NBA, there's a lot of points scored and the Sacramento Kings have to or happen to be the best offense in the modern NBA. That being said, their defense isn't good either. So it's not mm -hmm. acceptable sometimes how quickly they give up points. It's not acceptable uh, how they allow other teams to get comfortable. I think that's the most concerning thing is whether they're at home or on the road. Early on, you see teams come out against the Sacramento Kings and they look comfortable. But when it gets to the fourth quarter, the Kings defensively ha actually happen to be one of the best fourth quarter teams in the NBA. They have a top 10 defense in the fourth quarter when it matters, which is good. The problem is you have to get there. A night like tonight, they still got there, and they still happened to be tied going into the fourth quarter, so the slate was wiped clean. But again, you're falling down by 25 points early on to playoff teams, and the Utah Jazz are in the, in the hunt for the play-in picture, so we have to be respectful to that. But they're not the caliber of some of the teams they're going to face in the playoffs if they have a deep postseason run. You fall behind by 25 in those games, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So defensively, there are definitely problems. But the Kings also post a massive problem to any defense in the league. And I challenge those defenses to, yeah, sure, you're going to score on the Sacramento Kings, but find a way to stop the Kings' offense. And I would argue the Utah Jazz didn't stop the Kings tonight. The Kings stopped themselves. And I think that's fair to say. Well, as we look ahead and we look at that playoff picture with the loss, the Kings now go from second in the Western Conference to third in the Western Conference. And it's funny, less than 24 hours ago, Matt, we were talking about them potentially taking the number one seed. So uh, obviously, losses like this cannot happen when you look at the rest of the games for the Kings. While they do have some easy opponents in there, and like the San Antonio Spurs, you also have a lot of opponents in there fighting for playoff spots. So by no means... Um, you know, or no stretch of the imagination do they have an easy coast the rest of the way here. Now, tomorrow night, they don't have much time off. Like you said earlier, they're in a back-to-back. -back. They host the Boston Celtics tomorrow night, a team who's already clinched a playoff spot in the Eastern Conference and is currently standing at second in the Eastern Conference. Anything the Kings can take from this loss tonight that will propel them tomorrow or to put them in a, a, a good shape tomorrow against a really good team like Boston? I think the only thing the Sacramento Kings should take from tonight's game is recognize and look at what they did wrong and respond. Now, a response against the Boston Celtics might not necessarily mean a win. The Kings played the the, uh, the uh, uh, Milwaukee Bucks really, really well at the Golden 1 Center yeah. before going on this road trip. They still lost that game. That's because the, the Bucks are a championship-caliber program. The Boston Celtics, they are a championship-caliber program. That is their expectation. The Kings would like to get there, and being a top-two, top-three seed in that range, you would expect the Kings to have a chance to get there, but those teams have been there, done that before. So it's going to be tough for the Sacramento Kings to win this game against Boston tomorrow night. Regardless, even if it's, it's a loss, we should see them correct the mistakes that mm -hmm. they made in this game. I want to see a Kings team that looks uh, engaged early on. Defensively, I don't know what that looks like because the Boston Celtics might score a lot of points too, but I want the Sacramento Kings to look recognizable offensively. And here's the most, I think, disappointing part about tonight's game is it makes the likelihood of the Kings clinching at home this week a little bit smaller. And as a Sacramento Kings, longtime Kings supporter, as someone who grew up in this community, as someone who is, it knows what that means to this city to have the playoffs come back, I think it's only right that they clinch in front of their home crowd and don't clinch in Portland or somewhere else where we'll still be celebrating back here in Sacramento, of course, but it won't be in front of that home fan base. The number is still at four for the Sacramento Kings to clinch. They're starting, I believe, a four-game homestand here. So they could get some help from other teams. Who knows, that number could shrink, uh, could go down by even two in one night if the Kings were to win against the Boston Celtics tomorrow night. But handle your business. That's been kind of the MO of the Sacramento Kings this entire uh, all-star break onward is you're in control of your own destiny, regardless of the opponent control your destiny tomorrow night. Absolutely. And I'll tell you one thing, the leading candidate for coach of the year will hold the Kings accountable in every uh, sense. And Mike Brown, who's been doing a phenomenal job with them. So of course, once again, tomorrow night, the Kings hosting the Boston Celtics. Of course, we will be at Golden One Center covering that game. And of course, for more in-depth Kings coverage, tune in to the Locked On Kings podcast or daily podcast for all Kings news insight hosted by this guy right here matt george you can find it on abc 10 you can find it on roku abc 10 plus you can find it anywhere so be sure to tune in that for, for that and of course for more king's content and sports content be sure to tune in to abc10.com